Hello students, in this video we'll see how to compute the Laplacian and rotated coordinates and show that harmonic functions are rotationally invariant. So let's let x be u cosine theta minus v sine theta and let's let y be u sine theta plus v cosine theta. This transformation corresponds to a rotation of theta degrees anti-clockwise and here theta is going to be a fixed variable, so theta is fixed, is a constant. Our goal now, compute uxx x plus uy, or let's say f. Since we're already using the variable u over here, let's do it like this. Let's change this a little bit. We're going to change this to an f since I'm already using u. Let's compute fxx x plus fyy in terms of u and v variables. Okay, so let's do it. So by the chain rule, partial f partial x, partial f partial x by the chain rule is partial f partial u, and then partial u partial x plus partial f partial v, then partial v partial x. So I need to find partial u partial x and partial v partial x. So we'll do that over here. I'll explain how to do that. And then likewise, we have partial f partial y is going to be partial f partial u, partial u partial y, and then partial f partial v, partial v partial y. Now, we don't explicitly, we could explicitly solve these equations for u and v and then find the derivative of u with respect to x, but I'll do a different approach now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the transformation equation and I'm going to differentiate the transformation equation, so differentiate 1 with respect to x. I'm going to do the derivative of 1 with respect to x, and what will we get over here? Well, the derivative of x with respect to x, holding y as a constant, is going to be a 1, and then I'm going to get a um, is equal to partial u, partial x, cosine theta, and then minus partial v, partial x, sine theta, and then 0 is equal to partial u, partial x, sine theta, and then um, partial v, partial x, cosine theta. And now I have two equations, two unknowns for partial u, partial x, so we can solve that using any, any method we like over here. These ones probably should use Kramer's rule, so by Kramer's rule, u, x is going to be what? It's going to be the determinant 1, 0, and then negative sine theta, cosine theta, over the derivative of this, uh, over the determinant of the cross matrix, which is going to be cosine squared plus sine squared, so the bottom is just going to be a 1 over here. So we see that partial u, partial x is just going to be cosine of theta. And then likewise, what will partial v partial x be? So partial v partial x is going to be the determinant of what? Of cosine theta, sine theta, and then we'll have replace that with a 1 and a 0, 1 and then a 0 over here. And so we see that partial v partial x is just going to be negative sine theta, so that's negative sine of theta. Good. Let's do the derivative of 1, um, of one with respect to y. We do the derivative of 1 with respect to y, what do we get? we would get a 0 and a 1, and then the same thing over here. So I'll have a ux cosine theta minus vx sine theta. So now these are going to be y's, so it's going to be u, uh, the y's now. So let's put the y's in there. So this will be uy cosine of theta minus uy sine of theta, or vy, that's a vy sine of theta. And then 1 is equal to uy sine of theta plus vy cosine of theta, okay? And so what will uy be? So uy is going to be what? It's going to be the determinant of, I'm going to do a 0 and a 1, and then a negative sine of theta and a cosine of theta, and so that's going to be just a sine of theta. And then what will vy be? So vy is going to be the determinant of what? Of cosine theta, sine theta, and then 0, 1, and so that's just going to be a cosine of theta, cosine of theta. So now we can update our chain rules, that's great. So if we update our chain rules over here, we see that fx is going to be what? It's going to be ux, so that's going to be a cosine theta, times um, f sub u, and then partial v partial x we found is negative sine theta, so I have a negative sine theta, then fv, and then Fy is going to be what? Fy is going to be a uh, partial u partial y, which is sine theta, sine theta, 
f sub u, and then the plus cosine theta f sub v. So those are the first derivatives uh, in the u and v variables. Now, let's compute the second x derivative, f x x. Well, that's that, what's that going to be? I'm going to iteratively apply this. To do an x derivative, you do a cosine of theta times a u derivative minus sine theta times a v derivative. So we have a cosine of theta, and then a u derivative of our first derivative. And then a minus sine theta, sine theta, times a v derivative of our expression. Cosine theta f u minus sine theta f v. And if we simplify this, what will we get? We're going to have a cosine squared. So I'm going to have a cosine squared theta f a u and a u. Then what kind of cross terms will we get over here? We'll get a cosine and then a sine. And then we get a cosine and then a sine over here. So I'm going to have two of those. I'm going to have two sine theta cosine theta, the cross derivatives f u and v. And they'll have a plus sine squared, plus sine squared of theta f v v. Let's do the next derivative. So let's do the y y derivative. So f y y, f y y is going to be sine of theta. And then I'm going to do a what? It's going to be sine of theta. And then we do a u derivative, so sine of theta, then a u derivative of the original expression, sine of theta f sub u plus cosine theta f sub v. And then it's going to be plus cosine theta, plus cosine theta, and then a v derivative of the original expression. So that's going to be sine of theta f sub u plus cosine of theta f sub v. And now if we calculate all these things, what are we going to see over here? We're going to see that we're going to get a sine squared of theta f u u, sine squared of theta f u u. We're going to get a plus 2 sine theta cosine theta f u v, and then a cosine squared theta f v v. And so hence, if we add these equations together, what will we get? If we add these equations together, we see that f x x plus f y y, that's just the Laplacian of f in the xy coordinates, is the same thing as what? I'm going to have a cosine squared plus sine squared f u u. So it's just going to be an f u u, f u u. And then the cross terms are going to cancel out entirely because they're equal and opposite. And then finally, I have a sine squared of theta and a cosine squared of theta, f squared v v. Those add to 1, so I have f v v. And so this shows that the Laplacian is invariant under coordinate rotation. Thank you very much.